My name is Santosh and I'm from Bangalore, India. I own a retail business in Bangalore related to health and wellness products. I've been following you for a very long time and I admire your work. I am a revert Muslim now, Alhamdulillah. My question is, I've been feeling on and off about my faith towards Allah. I get confused and deviate myself from deen because of the worldly pleasures. How do I hold my faith strong and firm so that I do not get deviated? And I also want to be a dai like you. Please guide and suggest. Brother Santosh from Bangalore. He has been watching my videos and following me since a long time. And Alhamdulillah now he is a Muslim revert. He has accepted Islam. But he says that very often he gets deviated and it's difficult for him to be firm on the deen. Because of the worldly pleasure, he keeps on getting deviated. So he wants some help. How should he be firm on the deen and avoid the worldly pleasures which are not permitted in Islam? And he also wants to become a dai and he asked me a suggestion. Regarding a Muslim, as you know, the, the times now, the whole world has become a global village and as science and technology is improving, is advancing, the fitna is also increasing. Doing dawah has become easy because of technology, but there's more fitna. So the technology that is increasing, whether it be social media, with the Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, the social media. The, there are good things. You can get information at the click of a button, everything on your fingertips. You ask check Google, you get the reply. You want anything about Islam, it's very easy. Unlike the previous time, you Google, you get the reply. So there are pros and cons both. But the cons are more than the pros. The fitna on the social media is much more than the good things. So what we as Muslims should do, see to it that we utilize it for good things. Whether it be social media, whether it be that's happening technology. Technology per se is not haram. Using it for haram things is haram. So I do agree with you brother that there is a lot of fitna for many things, for pleasure, etc. So what we should do, number one is that the Prophet said, be in good company. And the hadith when the Prophet said, that if you meet a, a coal, coal man, a person who's a blacksmith, there are high chances that his black coal will rub on you or on your clothes. But when you meet a perfume seller, if you meet a perfume seller, the high chances that the good fragrance of his perfume will come onto you. Indicating that when you stay in company, be in company of good practicing Muslims and avoid the company of those who are away from the thing. So number one formula is see to it that the people that are around you, your friends, are good pious Muslims. And stay away from those friends who are away from the deen. So if you have a friend who is praying five times salah, who is offering tajjud, who is fasting in the month of Ramadan, who is doing more of the nawafil fast, who is giving charity, who is always talking about Quran, Hadith, it's better to be with him than a Muslim friend or a non-Muslim friend who may be drinking alcohol, who may be smoking, who may be having girlfriends, who may be doing zina. So number one is, see to it, you have a friend circle which is on the deen. And if you have less, go out and find the people who are more Islamic. And see to it that when there are attractions, you see to it that you get more pleasure by the Islamic activities. We know that the fitna is there, the music is there, you get impressed with music and you enjoy, you change it into enjoying the karat. Now everything on the click of a button, when you can get music easily on the YouTube, on the Facebook, you can get karat very easily. So see to it that you change your desire to things which will benefit you in akhirah. Allah says that if you strive for dunya, Allah will give you dunya but will not give you akhirah. If you strive for akhirah, Allah will give you akhirah and dunya both. That's the reason when we do dua. The best dua is of Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 201 where Allah says, 
ربنا آتینا فی الدنیا حسنتا و فی الاخرت حسنتا کی نحضا بننا او مائی لارڈ گیو می دا بیسٹ ان دس ورلڈ این دا یئر آفٹر این سیو می فرم دا ٹورمنٹ آف دا ہل فائر دا ون ورز بیفور دس ایس وی نو دس دعا but very few people know the verse before that the verse before that says that if you ask for dunya allah will give you dunya but will not give you akhirah the better of the muslim that those who pray rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adhabin nar that oh my lord give me the best in this world and the akhirah and save me from the torment of hellfire in this dua there are three things last give me the best in this world number two give me the best in the hereafter and number three save me from the torment of hellfire So actually you're asking for three things. From three things, one third is for this dunya and two third is for akhirah. So when you're doing dua, see to it, you do more dua for the akhirah than the dunya. So one scholar said that even in this we get guidance from Allah that two third you do dua for the akhirah, one third for dunya. That doesn't mean you do dua only for dunya, dunya. If you do only for dunya, I'll give you dunya but not akhirah. If you do for akhirah, Allah will give akhirah and dunya both. So my advice to you, brother Santosh, is see to it that your friend circles who are good practicing Muslims, who pray five times a day, who offer tahajjud, who fast, who give zakat, who talk good things, and see to it that you listen to lectures of the duats who impress you, who may give lectures which are logical, who may convince you. And the more you listen to them, see to it that you follow it. See to it that you offer five times salah in congregation in the mosque. It's a fard. Many people offer salah but may not offer in congregation. Some may offer congregation at home but may not offer at the mosque. According to Imam Adhabi, offering salah in congregation in a mosque is fard. And if you don't do it, it's a major sin. He labels it as 56 major sin. if you do not offer salah in congregation in a mosque without a valid reason. So my request to you see to it that you offer salah five times a day in congregation in the mosque. And imagine your life would be different. See to it besides offering the five times for the salah, you also offer the tahajjud in the last one third of the night. And the Prophet said the best prayer after the five times first prayer is the night prayer. It's a, it's hadith in Sahih Muslim, volume number three, hadith number 2755, that the best prayer after the further five times prayer is the Qayyam al Talking about the Vitar, and if with the Vitar you join with the Tajud, especially in the last one third of the night, and the Prophet prayed, eight rakat Tajud, and three rakat vitar, he paid eleven rakat. In the last one third of night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lower heaven. And there is an A which he says, does any of my servant want anything? And I will answer the prayer. So when you pray during this last one third night, and see to it that your sujood, your sajda is long. And if you pray during sajda, during the last one third of night, in tajjud to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, your prayers will be answered. And there if you say that please keep me away from the fitna of the world, the worldly desire, and inshallah Allah will help you. So the scholar who rightly said that you cannot say that you have tried everything or you have not left a single stone unturned unless you ask for Allah in your tahajjud salah, in sujood, in the last one third of the night. So my request to you would, besides praying five times salah, see to you pray the tahajjud salah, you can start with 20 minutes, increase it to half an hour, maybe one hour, can be two hours better. And see to it the sujoods are long, maybe one minute, one and a half minute, two minutes each sujood. So that if you do sujood for eight rakat, there are, uh, there are 16 sujoods you do in the eight rakat. And maybe half an hour you spend only in sujood. And you ask what you feel is the best. Then even offering the Salat al-Duha. And the Prophet said, you know, the Hadith Abu Huraira, may Allah be uh, pleased with him, that my close friend referring to the Prophet told me that do not miss three things. That is, praying, that is fasting three days in a month, referring to the Ayyam al 
13, 14, and 15. And praying the uh, night prayer and seeing to it that talking about the Vichar prayer and the and the Tajit prayer. And and you also said that about Salatul Duha, that praying the Salatul Duha. So these three things the Prophet recommended and it's very important. So the more you do your ibadah and besides your farais, doing the nawafil and hearing lectures of the duas, this will keep you on the straight track and then your enjoyment will change from the haram to the halal, not only halal to mustab and to fard. So, seeing to you have good company, you listen to the scholars and the more ibadah you do, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will see to it that you get peace in your life, the serenity with all the things that we have hustle bustle in the world. Imagine the serenity in offering salah is excellent. And doing dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeing to it that there are some dua, some times of dua which are more accepted. Like the one hour on Friday after Asar, before Maghrib. It's one hour that the hour of prayers. Where if you ask Allah, will answer your prayers. So if you do more of the sunnahs, more of the mustahab, then inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see to the life is filled with, with pleasure, with iman and with satisfaction. And number one is see to it that you abstain from the 70 major sin. As the Quran rightly says that if you abstain from the major sin, Allah will forgive your minor sin. So if you follow, if you read the book of Imam Madhabi, the Qabair, and you follow the 70 things, it will tell you the major faraiz that are there, offering fight and but natural. Obtain from shirk is the major sin. Number one, then he goes to murder, then black magic, then offering fight and salah, then giving zakat, fasting in the month of Ramadan, hajj if you have to do, and it goes in order. So this covers the major faraiz and also the major sins. And then inshallah you can go and see to it that you try and abstain the moderate sins or the minor sins. And inshallah, the moment you start and you keep on following more and more, Allah helps you and your life will change. And inshallah, you will find the serenity and the pleasure and you find a qalbi salim, that's a, a peaceful heart. Inshallah.